And now to conclude the evening, we have Y, the lucky. Stay, 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 stay. <laughs> and the thirsty cups. Cups, cups, cups. people you know um we don't really have anything to offer you guys in the way of substance tonight so i hope you'll you know i hope you're okay with that i mean i i did spend the other night sort of looking around on tv for something that i you know new products i could tell you about that might be interesting because i know you guys want to know about cutting edge stuff and i don't really know i mean I'm, I'm just sort of a hobbyist and i'm not really very well connected or anything so, um, but I saw this great infomercial, I don't know, um, I don't know, it was amazing, I don't know if you guys have seen this, it was for this um, substance called the Obedience Lacquer. And uh, it's like this paint, right, you buy a bucket of it, uh, you buy two buckets of it usually, and um, you take the Obedience Lacquer home and you, you, let's say you have a Labrador or something like that, you apply two coats to the Labrador, and then two coats to your hand, whichever one you choose, and whichever one is most, and you know, I don't, it doesn't matter. Then you give it a day, wait overnight, and then, then from the next day onward, you're able to control that dog using all sorts of hand gestures, and, uh, and you can get it to all, all kinds of things. I mean, they showed all, all kinds of great examples in the commercial. You can, um, you know, have it go get bottles and cans so you can recycle them and, and uh, recoup the cost, and, uh, they, you can have the dog take your kids on a winter sleigh or, you know, crap in your boss's bonsai tree or, you know, whatever. The, the sky's, even the sky is not the limit, you know, with this thing. You could do anything. And, you know, I thought, what a great stopgap until we get robots. You know, I mean, it's like, in, you know, we're waiting, waiting, you know. Now we can sort of use animals as a measure in between. But I was so short-sighted, you have no idea. The testimonials these people gave in the infomercial, 
you know, I'm, this is probably redundant from some of you, but um, basically one guy, in a lot of these testimonials, what they'll do is, is it's common to get a koala and paint it with magenta color. That, that's the common animal they use. Everyone loves koalas, everyone wants koalas. They haven't been helpful in domestication efforts. So, you know, uh, our hand has, their hand has been forced by our forced hand. So, um, basically, there was a guy on there, smoker for 55 years, but when he saw what the ko his koala could do, quit cold turkey. Yeah, that was amazing. Uh, there was another lady in there who, she had severe anxiety. She'd go to the kitchen and just the shininess of everything, the pots and the pans, they had them hanging up all around, the tile and everything, gave her performance anxiety. You know, there was, she just, she couldn't do it. She couldn't bake meals for her husband and it was, it was taxing their marriage. So fortunately, the distance that she got between her and her koala, the koala was able to saute and mince and they showed a lemon halibut that she had made. <laughs> Just gorgeous uh, food. The, the couple's going to Hawaii in August. I was like, that is great. It's, you know, amazing stuff. One of my friends saw, saw uh, two koalas getting interviewed on Oprah, which was pretty awesome. Some people are just too shy to meet other people, and even too shy to get on the internet, really. And, but they're able to use these koalas to meet and hook up. And you know, their koalas meet at the eucalyptus store, and um, they sort of just, you know, so Oprah was interviewing the two koalas and just really, I don't know, she was, she was, it was, it was great. I mean, sort of taking it easy, but then deep prodding questions and just that good mix that um, she's known for. And so <laughs> midway through the show, she drops, she says, all right, who wants to see the koala controllers? And she drops a curtain and the shy people are behind it, right? totally embarrassed, ashamed, you know? I mean, they felt the weight of 50 naked people. They just felt, they felt bare. Um, they weren't, they, they had never even seen each other before. They kind of, they, they, they went nuts. Koalas rampaged, tore the audience limb from limb. <laughs> on Oprah's show, she's freaking out, screaming. What are you, what is going on, you know? I mean, she gives out free cars all the time because these koalas giving out free carnage, you know? Like crazy. <laughs> The whole thing got smoothed over, I guess. I mean, it's not a blemish on the organization or anything. I mean, they, she had them back, they apologized. They reassembled the audience. Uh, Oprah painted the whole audience with uh, obedience lacquer and had them applaud, <laughs> you know? And it was just remarkable. Uh, they have a picture in the newspaper of one of the koalas swearing on the Bible, I'll never do it again, and that's Oprah's book of the month.
taped it under a lady. What are they gonna do with it? Am I gonna write unit tests? Take time to learn the methodologies and sign the manifestos. Ain't it good enough to go? Am I a programmer yet? 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 Bear with me for just a moment. We're delighted to be here today. <laughs> um, it's like Windows XP outside today. <laughs> All the grass is tilted to the left and swept. One or two uh, appropriately, corporately approved uh, Clouds of the cumulonimbus variety. <laughs> you guys pretend to be Rubyists. I can see right through it. <laughs> Rails are, uh, I mean, 
you guys, you guys see the language. You, I mean, yeah, you get it. You, I, I'll give you credit, you know? I mean, you see so much good, but there's a history here, okay? Everyone knows Ruby throughout all time. Everyone who's ever lived has known it. It's, I mean, it's been a part of, of everything. Every problem has been solved by it. <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna refresh you on some of your history, okay? First, talk I'm gonna, first uh, hack I'm gonna talk about tonight is the professor's pudding. It's a virus that came out around the turn of the century. And um, basically what it did is, uh, you, you would you know, become, be attached to something, you would run it, and it would say, uh, it's, it's 1020, you know, would you like to enjoy some professor's pudding? And there was an accept or decline. If you clicked accept, no problem. <laughs> if you selected dismiss, a pop-up came up saying, the professor's pudding is not to be dismissed. And then it would email all your contacts and, <laughs> you know, with, with, you know, with putting reminders and <laughs> coupons would start print, spooling out of the printer for uh, cheap, you know, jello pudding cups and um, all your wax cylinders, if they were attached to the computer, would be wiped out. <laughs> Fortunately, wax is read only. So the damage done was negligible. <laughs> One of our own thirsty cups here, Leany Clip, actually has done some, some research on the professor's pudding. We're gonna talk to her a little bit about this. Hey, I my notes. I'm okay. Hey, Leonie. I'm nervous. Hi, why? Okay. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for having me. Uh-huh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, you look great. <laughs> okay, so tell us what you know about the professor's pudding. How did you encounter it? Well, uh, originally I, uh, I encountered the, the hack. Uh, my dad was installing a program on his personal computer that he had clipped from the newspaper um, out of the, uh, the Sunday coupon insert. He uh -huh. clipped it out of that. And the program actually was designed to turn any file into a bitmap. So he was pretty excited about balancing his checkbook with it. <laughs> and uh, so he installed the program, mm -hmm. you know, and everything was going fine until, you know, dialog box pops up, tells us what time it is, asks about the pudding, and I was so shocked. I mean, I reacted to this on like, a visceral level. People don't like to be asked about the, about the pudding. I mean, that's no. the thing I, I find when we ask about it. No, or, exactly. You know, so, I, I mean, I was as upset as anyone. I, to right this so. day, if I think about it too much, my tongue swells up. Right. So I thought the only way to get past this is to, you know, do some research, find out what this is, okay. you know, where did it come from. So. so, yeah, I mean, was there a professor? I mean, what, there, how did this thing start? There actually was a professor uh, most commonly associated with the professor's pudding. Um, he, uh, his name was Professor Wilhelm Vargas. He, okay. uh, he was... He was pretty popular, actually, among the student body, uh, but uh, quirky, a little odd. Professor. Yeah. He, he also, um, you know, no one can deny he loved his pudding. Mm -hmm. So I, I can see why that, that tends to be, I mean, he inspired a lot of hijinks. Okay. So, uh, you know. Yeah, so do you see, I mean, what are we seeing today? Are these all student copycats of, like, the original, or, you know, um, I mean, has it stayed in the college system? There, there actually are a lot of, a lot of, you know, copies. Um, you can you can pretty much tell which viruses are uh, sort of mutations of the original strain, and which have just been um, written by you know you know sweaty teenagers, um, because the sweaty teenagers tend to put a lot of spelling mistakes in. Okay. Um, they they usually actually uh, misspell pudding. They spell it they spell it with a G. Um, so. Okay. So is it? <laughs> Is it spelled pudding? No, no, no. They put the G at the beginning. So oh. if you know, if you come across one and it says, you know, if it's asking you about the professor's pudding, yeah. then you can be sure it, it's probably a cheap imitation. Mm. Okay. Uh, where do you stand in all this? I mean, wh who do you think wrote it? Well, you know, there there are 
two main camps. It was written by a student, or it was written by the professor, Professor Vargas. Um, actually, after the research, I found that the truth is the pudding wrote it. Um, it, it really, it, it's a little hard to swallow at first, but if you, if you, if you really think about it, when you, when you come to understand that the pudding wrote it, 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 everything makes sense. Everything becomes clear, not just about the hat, but also about your life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I kind of knew that you were steering this direction. I could tell just by the way that you, you, you were... read my page on Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and just all—I mean, you, just all the deletions and back and forth that you have, guys have going on there. I mean, I can tell that it's a hotly contested topic. And, and my problem is, is you know, refrigeration. You know, I mean, the pudding has to leave for a period of time to hack, and you know, I mean. It's, it, I, 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 don't, I, I just don't, I, I, can't, I, I don't buy it, you know? Actually, when, when you come to understand the historical context of pudding at the time, I mean, pudding was more robust, you know? But we're not talking like a late 1980s Bill Cosby pudding here. Like that, admittedly, today's pudding could not have done it. However, around the turn of the century, pudding was essentially um, lard with a crispy horsehair crust. So, <laughs> It really, it is definitely possible. That sounds like a hacker. <laughs> it, it, it all makes perfect sense. Yeah. Okay, um, you know, I mean, I just don't think it's good to blame everything in your life on custard. I, I'm not really, I don't think that that's good, but I mean, whatever, you know? Well, I, I really, you would be surprised at how many of today's problems can be traced back to confectionery goods. Um, you know, pudding is far more widespread than you may be aware of. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some pudding in the audience tonight, somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's usually pretty well quaffed when it goes out, so you, know, you might not immediately notice that it's pudding. Um, but really, everything from salmonella all the way up through global warming, I think you really can, at least in part, Whoa, I mean, global warming, it's cold. I mean, okay, I, 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 I'll never understand that issue, I guess. We're probably just going to disagree on this. Okay. All right, Leone Clip, everyone. Thank you for your help. Okay, so the hack we're going to talk about is this particular line, which has survived, you know, sort of like the permutations of the hack that have gone around. In this hack, uh, it's basically grabbing all the MP3 files in a directory, and can you guys see the line okay, or is it way back there just abysmal? Does that mean you can see it, or...? Okay. <laughs> Tremendous. So, um, and the cool thing about this hack is it's using method to proc, okay? Basically what it's doing is it's taking the file delete method, delete is a part of the file class, it's a class method, and it's converting it to a proc and passing each of those MP3s through the method. This is kind of a tough hack. I mean, I, but you know, I mean, basically there's sort of like a cast going on here, and so it goes through the directory, deletes all the MP3 MP3 files. So um, I, I bring this up now because of the recent symbol to proc sort of fun that we've had over the past year, and now it's like an officially been embraced by Japan. And um, that's, that means that it speaks to all people. And <laughs> it should speak to all of you. And so we're just going to, I'm just going to show you some fun you can have with Method to Proc. OK, so um, we'll start simple. I, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Come on. Come on. Put your best practices away. <laughs> Standing O again from that guy. <laughs> oh, it's Glenn Vanderberg. I give you a standing O in return. <laughs> Once this settles in, you'll be doing all your addition this way. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm not going to even bother to explain the slide, but uh, basically, you go through the array. Okay, um, here's, here's, now I'm just going to show you how ugly it can get. Can anybody tell me what the answer to this is? Seriously. 
David Hennemeyer Hansen, what's the answer to this? <laughs> hey, where's the DHH girl? <laughs> what was the answer to the question? Or to the, to the, I, I won't put you on this. Man, I mean, that's even wrong. I think. No, it's right. It's right. See, that's how screwed up this is, right? Because what it does is it'll go through and it'll take four minus ten, four minus twenty, four minus thirty. So the hard thing about this is your operators are just in the wrong place. You know? I mean, there's. <laughs> There's no telling. So this is... <laughs> Are you guys going to take me serious tonight? Or... <laughs> I wanted to walk away from this a legend. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so... Uh, compare. We'll skip that. That's just awful. <laughs> okay, so... Um... Here we go. Scanning an array for, uh, it can be easily done with grep. So there's no point to really using regexes with method to proc. That's unfortunate. Okay, here's a good one. <laughs> oh, you laughed. Here we've got an array, a two-dimensional array of key value pairs going to turn into a hash. This is actually a very efficient, or you know, very, a very short way to write it, you know? <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, basically it's gonna loop through the array and store each pair in store. The, the cool thing about this method to proc hack is it's one of the few that you can use that's, that actually has two arguments, you know, that just kind of naturally, because store takes two arguments. It takes a key and a value, and basically these, array, these inner arrays are just gonna collapse into place as arguments. I don't know, I mean, that's, Dave Thomas, I mean, you know, that's all right. <laughs> so we get an array out of it. Um, see, here are some permutations of that just for visual comparison. Uh, you have the array inject. Um, you know, and the problem always with inject is just remembering to tack that H on the end, you know, make sure that you're shipping back the right value. Uh, but that's the great thing about it. So, yeah, then you've got a standard array each, which is a much easier to read and it's shorter, so. <laughs> Here's an interesting one. In initialize, uh, you can use loop through a hash and um, set the instance variables for each, um, for each entry. So, but the problem is you have to look like this. <laughs> so basically, you have to, uh, your symbols have to be instance variables, unless you do like a second method to proc, but I didn't really have room in the slide for that. <laughs> Okay, so here we go with, uh, I, I think actually a decent use of method to proc is when you're inside one of your own instance methods and you just want to loop through and pass it to a method that's in that same class. So here basically we've got a parse method. It's looping through each line of that and passing it out to parse line. It's kind of, I mean, it's kind of a dumb method, but you know, it, it's still sort of, in, you know, it shows sort of the use. I want to, you know, we want to use these. These are obscure things. Here's an interesting one, requiring everything in a file. Um, you know, if you've got two, admittedly, I was really hoping we'd go through this all straight faced. And then, uh, I don't know what we do after that. I don't think we could go on with the conference, that's for sure. Okay, uh, you know, casting. Uh, we could dispatch it off to the URI cast. Um, we've got an array of URIs. We want to turn them all into URIs. Um, you can do the same thing with string and integer. Um, so yeah, it's all ugly, but I mean, look at this in JavaScript. You know, I mean, seriously, do you ever see these enclosures they use in JavaScript? And that's supposed to be beautiful, you know? I mean, we're talking about a little uh, ampersand here, you know? But I, in comparison to all other uh, Ruby code that's out there, I'm, I'm totally with Oh crap, I don't have any sound. You guys want to give me some sound real quick? 
the god of chaos, the god of godlessness, Methudum, a conduit for druids, Methurium, a poisonous house constructed by said druids. Hey, no, well, let's just, uh, let's just take it easy. I, I can't see the sun right now, and Miss Moderator, could you crack a window? And three, demonic number three, three points on the number three. And do you not, Mr. Malski, meet in the moonless night at Codehenge and sacrifice one pure cloven yammer upon the symbol tables of the interpreter, burning the traces of your stacks, lexing and parsing with mead flowing in the tambourine, gyrations even I would not believe. Those gypsies will themselves die. But for now, let us make merry and bay at the vacuous county. Of night, of night! Yikes! Whoa! That is awesome! That is totally ruby! Gem install that! Oh, did you get all that from the <laughs> And more! Wow! That was like the Da Vinci Code. I gotta say, it feels so good to just sit back and watch all these scholarly pursuits fulfill. We're getting a fantastic look into what makes ruby so fantastically vital. I admit it's somewhat disparaging to find out how much idolatry I've been party to and on company time, but at least it has all served a greater purpose, that of Beelzebub, oh, he is master of deception. Call me deceived, deliciously deceived, but I will not deviate from my appointment at the smoldering pyre this evening. Gather the Yaminos, let's go! Join the friends and co-routine, method, block, and slip and sleep, a Yamino and a block of Shepherdline! Okay, you guys have a good time. I'm confident that Ruby will one day rescue you and ensure your happy return. You guys go ahead and hash that out. I've got an array of things to do here. Jeez, invoking the symbol table, that was good. Thank you. But that's the only compliment I'm going to give you. I mean, that is it. Yes, very good. So, you're new here? Yes, yes, yes. Do I know your name? Yes, you do. Oh, yeah, was it, uh... Mexican Lupin! Thanks, Chad, on that idea. The mic worked great. Pragmatic.
because she's a stupid kid, she get everything that she wants off of the internet. And all you gotta do is scroll down. And all you gotta do is tap down. And I think we're gonna confuse the ocean waves with all this typing. Yeah, I think we're gonna confuse the tectonic plates with all this typing.
Okay, great, perfect. How's everybody doing? Okay, now it's starting to get hot in here a little bit, for me at least. I mean, it's like starting, it's like working on a full hard drive. It's got Windows ME. <sighs> I don't, have you guys used the new version of Windows? No. Oh, really? I've been a beta tester for months now. Um, they, they contacted me. It's a really cool version, actually. I mean, I think that you guys are going to dig it. Um, the new version of Windows is called Windows FU. It's really cool. <laughs> Which stands for Fantastic Unlimited. <laughs> the deal is, is Windows Foo is like basically trying to move away from productivity. Because everybody else is really focused on that right now. It's, it's saturated. So the deal here is that <clears throat> They figured out ways to help you sort of, you know, stop getting some things done, okay? Like for example, you can zoom out to see all your apps, right? But you can zoom way out, way, 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 way out. So that they're, they're like little ants, you know? <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, they're way, way down there. So you can easily just close one, you know? I mean, if you've got a spreadsheet looking at you that's just, you know, full, like, it's hard to just ditch that, you know? Just get rid of it. But when you're zoomed way out, you can just stamp on it, you know? <laughs> I thought that was a totally innovative feature, fe feature, and I'm just, I just, I mean, their teams are just, they had a whole team on that, and it just was awesome. And I'm stoked and thrilled. Um, they have like a to-do list, basically, where like you, you know, you enter two or three items, and then it traps those behind uh, levels of solitaire, right? You have to beat, you know, like 30 levels of solitaire. Pretty sweet. Windows Foo. This was like build 27 or something. It's pretty sweet. So yeah, like you, you unlock levels of solitaire and then you can do an item and you can do maybe, you know, like, you know, you can do like one every three days or something like that. You, you're progressing, you're getting solitaire done, you're getting to-do done. Um, innovative, groundbreaking, you know? Um, web 0.0. <laughs> so the, the, the great, the, the other nice thing about Windows Foo is that basically they've got like a whole, whole wheat interface, right? It's got trimmings and everything. It's sort of like grains, corn, oxen, you know, sort of like harvest time. You know, stop, get back. Uh, you know, things are growing right now. We're not going to go out and get them yet. They're just growing. <laughs> you know? So like, and, and and allegedly, this whole wheat interface leads to 75% fewer printer jams. <laughs> Especially when printing poo. <laughs> they know their target audience. Okay, the next hack we're gonna talk about is Hotel Wars 1945. Uh, back in the 40s, uh, hotel chains would use Ruby to combat each other. They had DRV processes lined up. But the kid that started it all was a young boy who worked as um, a bellhop. And uh, basically, he, he uh, found that he could um, hook up Ruby to the machine's towel drying machine. And it would go out and, it, during the night and steal things from the other hotels, right? It was amazing. And um, it's really a tribute to programming. And I, I think it's something you all need to study because all programming begins with theft, you know? <laughs> Most programmers begin programming something to steal something. Or their programming is stealing something. Um, here are a few of the items they stole. Towels, socks, robes, brass buttons from bellhop uniforms, shrimp forks, soup tureens, elevator keys, Bibles, manual cranks, commemorative matches, laundry baskets, candle snuffers, pineapple spears, gas logs, decorative carafes, freshly laundered gloves, safety pins, bread, Germans, figures, sugar, anyway, all the basic necessities. <laughs> so basically, um, this is, this, these are like the things that they could kind of, you know, he, he could get his feelers out, and they'd steal these things from each other, just minor inventory things. We'll do these, this at the hotel this afternoon, I'll show you how. <laughs> Okay, I can't seem to advance frame on this. 
Um, so we'll probably just have to move on. Um, it's a bad hat.
See, off topic. Okay, that was, um, that was sort of a song about the, the, um, the bubble. Because uh, the bubble was funny because a lot of people get depressed and, I mean, you know, I mean, we we're basically fine, you know. I mean, but it was hard. It was hard. I'm, I'm not, I, it was hard. But, you know, random people, you know, you, you'd be hanging out with somebody and they would be pretty depressed about it. And, um, you know, just sitting there uh, on the staircase, you know. Like, it's, it's the economy, man. So, uh, Stroke of luck, everyone! I'm definitely here. But not just you, everyone besides you as well. Oh yeah, I forgot. What a glorious future. So rich, so lush. And uh, it's not even over yet. I'm a gay guy. Oh yeah, fantastic. I'm a Jesuit priest. Wow! Good choice! I'm a pal. I'm a Palestinian. Oh, that's uh, I'm kind of a black guy gymnast. Mm. That's a... Hey, wow! Oh, wow! That's a combo move. Very cool. Uh, I, I also do magic. That's cool, right? It wouldn't be a future without magic. You're gonna fill up this future with fancy magic. Don't, Don't you dare stop, stop doing, doing magic. magic. I won't. I got a Everyone's here in the future. 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 Everyone. Hello, you've reached the future. I'm off caressing the innovators right now. Please leave a message. Future, hey, this is Bob Sanders. Wow, it's nice to hear your voice. It's been a wild ride these last couple of years. So many thrills. So many thrills. You know, I caught wind of some of this new stuff you're doing. Outrageous. I really like what I hear that's coming down the pipeline. You have such a way. I've never felt this way before. And believe me, I do. Okay, well, I've got another call coming in. It could be anyone. The possibilities, thanks to you, are limitless. All right, thanks. Gotta go. Keep real. I'm off. Gotta split. I got a call, so, uh, arrivederci. Bonsoir. Kiss, kiss. I'll be your same. Good night. See ya. Just uh, totally. 
really a, a fun to copy you guys. Copy you guys? I'm a real aholic. What can I say? Seize your destination, have a ride attack. I love the attitude. Oh, yeah, more, 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 more. All right, are we all ready for the big announcement? Hey, uh, champ, you want to mosey over here for a second? Oh, man, yes. What's this Amish guy doing here? He's future. Release me. This can't be happening. Look at this mess. This guy's a sea captain. I'm a sea captain. And my... And his robotic sailor. No, my... My robotic sailor just... No, crashed. let me say it. His robotic sailor just crashed. Oh, that's funny. We gotta get this stuff out of here before the tourists get here. Look who we brought. Who'd you bring? No, silly, it's not. They're here. Big whoop. Everyone's here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at all the creatures. Oh, we did oh, stuff over here. Oh, Look at all the bears. Oh, Please tell us all about oh, it. So, um, yes, we're just... Uh, don't look now, but, um, great things. What a world. Fortuitous adventures await on every corner. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the launch of Amish Man Enhanced. This is just a sampling of the future happening out in the isolated rural colonies of the future. Everyone, we think it's just here, but it's happening everywhere. Everywhere? Is here in the future? I do not want to be here. Ah, oh, Bob, you have ears in hats and beards. My heart stopped. Our heart can stop. Oh, oh, I cannot tarry. I must leave. My abode is distant. Good day to you. Te best Amish guy ever. Steed, we are back in. It's sure hard to imagine that we will perfect on this model, but we inexplicably shall. Revision, revision. I've seen so many of these launches. The hand that touches the sandwich mostly touches the needle. Release me now. My children, their hearts are pending. You have to admit, you do churn butter now a lot better than you used to. Have you thought about e-butter churning, huh? Let's log on right now! I must go. Birds are in my yard. Give me my log on. Yeah. Oh, give me one. Let's get it started. Yeah. Give him the log. I've got the site loaded. He can log on his guest. Look, Amish guy, look. Oh, come on, Amish guy, and this look. The page is coming up. I want not the handling of strange online butter. Jeez, man, let butter have a future. Golly. Come on, work with us here. Okay, step into the portal. Come on. Yep. We don't have all day. This is a hefty license here. Can somebody kind of move him close? We're really not getting in. Yes. Oh, well. Look, oh, look at there. Steps. It is advanced. He's on. Oh. Now so he's really going to... That's got a ring to it. I like it. No, he didn't. He's still here somewhere in the future. Everyone is. Yes, sir. All right, well, room for improvement. Not bad, though. Not bad at all. Okay, so um, I guess the last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, last thing here is um, uh, balloon. It's at balloon.hobbix.com, and uh, basically um, the idea here is is uh, Ruby Gems, right? Have you guys ever tried to hack Ruby Gems? You've hacked Ruby Gems. <laughs> Guys, um, um, unfortunately, I don't have any slides to show you, but um, if you hit the site, what it does is you can set up, um, you can set up little scripts um, that 
you know, they basically download gems temporarily, okay, in temporary folders so that you can try out programs without having to install them in your main directory. And, um, and I'm hoping that, that programs like this will help stimulate putting together like a gem API because generally speaking, we, we use the command line, that's great and stuff like that. But there are some, there are some fun uses of, of, uh, of um, you know, gem hacking. If you, if you, you know, change basically the load path um, inside gems, there's a command called use paths and, um, but there's, there's some finagling you have to do with that in MKMF to get them working right. It sounds like an industrial band. <laughs> but um, it's not, it's make files. Some industrial bands may make make files, but that's not this. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'll, I'll, so yeah, check it out. It's, it's probably kind of buggy right now because it's brand new, but um, it's something I thought I'd mention. No, the thing that broke was not the strap I made, it was the rental guitar. Peg just came right out. Yeah, no, I put it back in, but if it happens again, it's not me, it's that. I'm an excellent seamstress. I made my own wings. I can make a guitar strap. <laughs>
Okay, we're gonna just play one more song for you this evening. And um, you guys have just been great. You know, can't wait to meet, meet uh, everyone. Thank you. 
before we're sitting down, we're just going to put up a classic cartoon for you. Well, lately, I've been reading the blogs, and a Python guy has been spying on us, stealing up all our trade secrets. We're so not surprised that we forgot to leave our house a cave. Wait, what trade secrets? He probably means PEP 343, in which Python receives its own syntax for anonymous blocks. Don't forget Django, where Python developers can be found copying Rails word for word. They're not copying Rails. Ha! Ah, looks like we found our snake in the grass. Don't you mean snake? In the jewel closet? So, snake boy, what else are you gonna copy? What's next? You guys gonna get a bunch of your own Japanese guys? Eigen classes? <laughs> you think you can take all our Eigen classes? We're done copying you guys. I'm just waiting for you to start copying us. Copy you? Who would copy you? We don't need white space, you stupid airhead in your air language. Yes, but he has a good point, Mr. Malski. Python has long had its own bytecode format, as well as its own object database and great Unicode support. Maybe we could use some of their ideas. This young Python supporter is a human being, after all. Look at him. He has arms and legs like many human beings. <laughs> Miss Examiner, I don't want to start a fist fight over whether this young man is a human being or not. When it comes down to it, he probably is underneath all that venom. But I am a grown man, and no one here can force me to indent my source code. I've seen Python source code, and you have to take a pretty deep breath to snorkel down through the levels of scope inside yeah. these scripts. Just break up your stuff into smaller functions. <laughs> what? Um, just break it up. Break your code up into smaller functions. You shouldn't be nesting that deeply. Well, okay, that's true. Yep. Seriously, good answer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, does anyone in here like to rollerblade? We, we all, all do. do. We all rollerblade here. This must mean we're all human beings. Human beings and close friends. You guys, was this a setup? You really got me. That was the best. She totally thought I even cared about Python people. <laughs> Let's give it up for why the lucky stick and the thirsty cups.